Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. I'm thrilled to have this week's guest. We have Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal. Welcome to the show. Great to be here, Jeff. Thanks yeah, for having me. Sure thing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and you know what, what, what you're up to these days? Well, what I'm up to is, is, is putting out this book. Um, it's, uh, it's been a 40 year project, if you can believe this, starting in 1977, I had a full-time Yankee press pass, which I got under somewhat erroneous means, uh, for eight seasons, full access to the Yankees. Uh, I was a photographer at the time, shooting a lot of pictures there. I had, and none of them ever were published. I'll explain why in, in a moment. And they traveled with me from one city from one coast to another, back and forth over 40 years. And then I decided to uh, put the book out, get these books published, and tell my story about how I got the press pass. Okay, so what is the premise of the book? The premise of the book, there's, there's, two, there's two parts to it. First part is how I got this press pass and, and how I continued to get it for the eight seasons. Uh, the, and it, it's very interesting. It's got a lot of the ups and downs and almost getting caught. And then it's also about putting out these pictures. We picked the 130 best shots, mostly from 77 to 79. Um, interesting years to be at Yankee Stadium, which is where all this took place. And, uh, and, that's, and it's an ebook, which can only be, uh, you can get it on the internet uh, if you have Kindle, if you have Nook. Uh, book baby, you can get a PDF version of it for your computer. You can get anything but a hard copy at the moment. Okay, so I took a, a look at, at the book ahead of time and I saw some of the photos and they're pretty good photos. So um, were, did you know how to shoot photos and you know why did you start taking them? No, I, I was originally, um, my background was video mm -hmm. at that point in time. Um, and I was directing a TV show called Sports 77. Uh, I was asked to become part of their crew, to go to Yankee Stadium, go on the field and shoot video interviews beforehand. One thing led to another, and I wound up being in charge and the person who would call the woman who would give out the press credentials. The show gets canceled, but I keep calling for the press credentials time and time again. So now I'm going to the ballpark and I'm almost feeling guilty that everybody else is working and I'm just sitting there, you know, having ice cream <laughs> and watching the game. And I always was interested in maybe I could do some still photography. So I got into still photography, took thousands of pictures over the eight years. And, uh, and it became a, a little bit of a hobby out of control. But uh, like I said, none of the pictures, because I didn't work for anybody, um, none of the pictures ever got published. So I thought it was about time. Okay. So what separates your photos from, say, other sports photos? Uh, okay. Well, well, first, the historic aspect of it. These are sort of, uh, like I read that they found these old Beatle pictures that had never been published and everybody was excited. Well, when I grew up, the Yankees were the Beatles. Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle, later on Reggie Jackson and, and, and Catfish Hunter, all, all these people. So um, there's the historical aspect of here's pictures that are, you know have been found that have never been seen before. My style of shooting I knew I wasn't going to compete with Sports Illustrated for action shots. So I was more on the field before the game, hanging around the batting cage, getting close-ups, getting odd offbeat pictures. There's a, there's a picture of Sparky Lyle coming out on the field with a bag over his head, uh, like the unknown comic, but he was the unknown pitcher. And as far as I know, I'm the only one who took that picture that day, and, and that's in the book. Um, so uh, there's Mark Belanger fooling around with his hat backwards. Uh, there's the, the tragic armband picture of after Thurman Munson died, all the Yankees were wearing black armbands. So I would try to come up with something that was a little bit different. Um, I loved being in the locker room after the World Series victories, champagne flying all over the place, taking pictures like that. So I tried to come up with uh, things that were offbeat. I did took, take my share of action pictures. But even those I tried to make a little bit different. I might focus on what the umpire was doing on a play, uh, where he's calling a guy out at the plate or calling somebody out at second base. So they're, they're, I think they're unique and different in their own way. Yeah, I mean, I, I was looking at the book. I saw one, as you're talking about the umpires, of them just kind of like sweeping off home plate, which you don't typically see a shot like that. Right. And there was a game. I, I get to the ballpark, and then uh, there was a rain delay. And I shot a picture, I was sitting in the dugout, and I shot a picture of the rain delay, 
as they're putting the tarp on the field. And you don't, and it was, you know, you don't know how these pictures are going to come out. Sometimes you shoot the picture and it goes away. Uh, especially back then, too, you, you were very economical about how you took pictures because it cost a lot of money then. Today, everybody's on their iPhones and, you know, smartphones taking pictures at, at, at random. Then every shot you took cost you money. Every time you developed, cost you money. Print, cost you money. So you don't know how they're going to come out. But I was, like, real happy with this particular picture, you know. So it was like, uh, and sometimes you take pictures of guys that, uh, the Yankee clubhouse manager, Pete Sheehy, he was there since Babe Ruth had been there. And he was sort of like how you would imagine a 1920s clubhouse manager looking. And I just got this nice portrait of him. So different things. Okay. So being that you had these fake credentials, um, were you ever f afraid of getting caught? And what, what would happen if you did? <laughs> I always thought every time I went to a game, and I would go like in 78, I went to 50 games plus the playoffs and the World Series, a lot of games. Every time I went, I thought it would be my last time, that this can't possibly just keep going on forever. Somebody's, you know, I tried to stay invisible, but somebody was going to ask me, like, who do you work for? Oh, I'm with Sports 78 or 79. Oh, but that show got canceled two years ago. How could you be working there? Well, I am. And, and I figured what would happen to me, I figured I'd either be escorted out of the ballpark and on some sort of a blacklist and never be allowed at Yankee Stadium again. Or I had this, this vision of me sitting in front of George Steinbrenner's desk and, and like going to the principal's office and him offering me a job. <laughs> you know, well, cool. if you could pull this off, why don't you come to work for me? You know? Sure. So, but I never, I never got busted. Uh, over eight seasons, my, my last game going on with the credential was October of 84, last game of the season when uh, Don Manningly beat out Dave uh, Winfield for the batting title. And I moved to LA um, a week later. Uh, and ultimately, about six months later, became president of a nationwide sports network called FNN Score. So the irony of it was I went from having to fabricate uh, every year a letter asking for a press credential for a show that didn't exist to now I had a credential to virtually any event in the country or the world that I wanted to go to because I ran this sports network. All right, so let's kind of get into the, the meat of the book. I'm sure the viewers out there want to know, you know, what kind of pictures are in there and, you know, what are some of your favorites? Oh, the, the, there's a, a whole slew of them. My, 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 my very best favorite, which is not a, was a picture that I didn't shoot, and it was the opening day of 1978, and the uh, media relations head, Larry Wall, came on the field and he said, don't anybody leave, we got a surprise for you. And as he says that, I look down the runway of the dugout and it's Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris. And this was Lennon and McCartney for me. And all of a sudden I was 10 years old again and I said to one of the other photographers, I said, I'm gonna go stand between the two of them. You have to get a picture of me with them. Whether they're into it or not is irrelevant. I need this picture. And I stood between Mantle and Maris and he got the picture. And uh, Roger, very much into the picture. Mickey was like, what are you doing here, kid? But it was, but it, you know. So that's, that's one of my favorites. Uh, the, we mentioned the, the Sparky Lyle bag over the head picture, uh, also uh, one, of, one of my favorites. And then I learned how to shoot triple exposures. I don't even know how I did it. If I had to do it today, I'd have to really sit and, and learn how to do it all over again because I have no idea. But I was able to like, focus on the pitcher and and shoot in three segments. And remember, there's no photoshopping back there, folks. This is this is real. You had to do it the hard way. And I'd be able to shoot the pitcher in motion. And I have a really good one of Ron Guidry uh, taken in the 78 season when he went 25 and three, one of the greatest pitching seasons in baseball history of the triple exposure. And I remember giving him a copy of it and, uh, and having fun. So that those are the common ones. Um, Thurman Munson, celebrating in the Yankee uh, clubhouse after the 77 World Series, champagne flowing all over him, uh, n having no idea, you know, that less than two years later, you know, he would pass in that terrible plane crash. So uh, those are some of my favorites. So it had to be such a thrill to be, one, a fan, two, that you were in there <laughs> illegally. Um, I mean, did you ever find yourself kind of, getting emotionally involved in missing photographs and said, oh, I wish I would have taken one there? Not in the missing sense. Um, I got emotionally involved um, the first game back after Thurman Munson's funeral in 79. And, and, you know, 
taking pictures of the, of the ceremony that was going on in the field with tears running down my face while I was doing it, you know, that, that was uh, I- emotional. Um, taking my father to a game and being able to bring him on the field, because real quickly what, what happened was I would be able to call up Ann Milio and I'd say, uh, oh, I need two passes for this game today. I'm bringing a photographer and, and myself. Mm-hmm. Or I'm bringing, uh, and, and, and early on, the photographer was my then girlfriend, now my, my wife, Carrie Klein. So, um, so one day I called up my father, who was bo- brought up in the Bronx. He was at Lou Gehrig Day, lifelong Yankee fan, responsible for me being <laughs> a lifelong Yankee fan. And, uh, and I called him up and I said, Dad, I'm going to pick you up and I'm taking you to the Yankee game and you're going to go in a way that you've never gone before. And I used him, I took him on the field thinking, okay, we're definitely getting busted for this, but it's worth it. And somehow we got through the day. Nobody asked him who he was. And he was in a three-piece suit with a s- shirt and tie on and everything and leaning on the batting cage watching it. And, you know, and so it was exciting to be able to take, take him to a game. Wow. All right, so Tokyo, these photos are about 40 years old or so. And, you know, I'm sure it, it's great that the public now has an opportunity to, to um, actually see them. So... I mean, is it why now you decided on getting out? It has something to do with just the way r- the world revolves and technology? Well, one, as I told you, I was inspired by the Beatle find. I said, well, you know, these are, in my world, this was like the Beatles again, finding this, these great old pictures. Um, but the technology today allows a lot more free enterprise. I didn't have to go around from publisher to publisher, hat in hand. You can self publish. And, and put out an ebook, and, and next thing you know, it's it's you know it's on Kindle and it's on it's on the Nook. So I think that affords you the opportunity. Not the easiest layout in the world. I have to mention Kylie Jenkin, who put this book together for me, did a fantastic job. It's it's not easy doing pictures and words as an ebook, but she made it happen, and uh, and the response has been you know really good. So okay, so. Uh... I think you know, I know you mentioned seventy-eight to eighty, but is there uh, part of the book or or some pictures taken from more from one year than the other? It was mostly seventy-seven to seventy-nine. Uh, what what were referred to as the Bronx Zoo years. It was crazy times at Yankee Stadium. Uh, Billy Martin was manager, then he wasn't. Then Bob Lenman was manager. Then Billy was back in again. Yogi Berra was in. Yogi Berra was out. Yogi Berra was coaching first base. It was it 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 was a wild time. Um, Sparky Lyle, who we mentioned, he wins the Cy Young Award in 1977, and they reward him by, by getting Goose Gossage in 1978. And, and as Greg Nettle said, he went from Cy Young to Sayonara. All of a sudden, he wasn't even being used. So it, it, was, some, it was wild times there. And, uh, and also, by condensing the stuff we put out from 77 to 79, it allows us to do a second volume later on of the later years. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I think we for, totally forgot to mention the, the name of the book, which is of course. A, a Faux Photographer's Yankee Stadium Memoir. And, and it's Faux, F-A-U-X, as in fraud. Uh, and uh, not that I was fraudulent in my abilities as a photographer, but I was fraudulent in my press pass. And, and, uh, but a photographer's Yankee Stadium Memoir. Um, and you know people can uh, find out how to get the book uh, by going to our web page at uh, www.yankeememoir.com. And that gives you all the different versions and ways you can get the book. Okay. So to sum it all up, it's basically a combination of all your adventures, you know, near bust of your fake credentials and uh, and the body of work that it produced, that being your pictures, correct? Yeah. And, and let, me, let me just add this. Um, it's not just Yankees, too. I've got pictures of, of the opponents, uh, there's some great shots of Rod Carew and uh, uh, Mark Fidgerich, who pitched for the Detroit Tigers at the time. A lot of Red Sox. When Don Zimmer was with the Red Sox, some great shots of him. Earl Weaver with the Orioles. Um, we, uh, Nolan Ryan's in the book. Some great when he was with the Angels. So it, it's not just Yankees. Yeah. Yeah, I, being an Orioles fan, I, I, I noticed the Earl Weaver and the Mark Belanger. And, right. Yeah, so there's some pretty cool stuff in there. and uh, It's definitely uh, worth checking out if you're a sports fan. And if you would like uh, more information, as, as Tokyo said, um, you go to his website. I will have the website at the end of this video. And if you want to share some comments, please fill out the box below. But that's all we have for this week. Until next time, take care.